Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis continuing our series about bleeding and coagulation disorders. In the previous video, we had a comparison between GP1B and GP2B3A. Today, let's talk about the famous antiplatelet, analgesic, antipyretic, and anti inflammatory wonder drug, also known as acetyl salicylic acid. With that being said, now let's get started. Acetyl salicylic acid, aka the wonder drug. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. William Wordsworth. We don't write good English anymore. We're in trouble. Dear William, you're worth more than your words. Acetyl salicylic acid, aka aspirin, aka the wonder drug, is antiplatelet, analgesic, antipyretic, and anti-inflammatory, one of the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, although they, we like to classify non-steroidals into aspirin and other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs because aspirin is kind of unique, comes from the willow tree, and if you check my video called A Brief History of Hematology. I've talked about the history of aspirin and the willow tree and Bayer AG, the pharmaceutical corporation. What, by the way, what's the difference between aspirin and aspirin? Aspirin small a is a generic drug. Aspirin big A is a trademark for the company Bayer AG. So if you decided in the future that you would like to launch a company to produce aspirin, you can do it. It's perfectly okay. However, when you write aspirin on your bottles, you have to write a small a, not big A, because big A is a trademark for Bayer. You don't mess with our trademark, okay? You don't mess with Texas. Oh, the Bayer are German, they are not from Texas, but anyways. Mechanism of action of aspirin irreversibly inhibits the cyclooxygenase. How does it inhibit it? By acetylation. It's called acetyl salicylic acid for heaven's sake. When you inhibit the cyclooxygenase, you don't get any thromboxane in you too, so there is no platelet aggregation. This is called irreversible non-competitive antagonism of cyclooxygenase. Irreversible means you cannot go back. Non-competitive antagonism, which means you cannot add another drug to compete with aspirin at the same receptor. It's not going to happen. It's non-competitive. After taking the last aspirin pill, how long do you have to wait until platelet restore their function? You have to wait 48 hours. You have to wait for the old platelets that have their cyclooxygenase inhibited to die and for the bone marrow to release megakaryocytes be destroyed into platelets. The new platelets have normal cyclooxygenase. They can produce thromboxane into and you can function normally again. Question, does aspirin inhibit cyclooxygenase 1 or cyclooxygenase 2? And the answer is... Both. Aspirin inhibits both cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2. How about prostaglandin I2 or prostacyclin? Aspirin doesn't inhibit it. If you want to be more sophisticated, okay, in the beginning it inhibits prostacyclin, but at the end of the day there is no inhibition because the receptor is whatever, being accustomed to the aspirin, blah blah blah, I don't care. Membrane phospholipid into arachidonic acid. Cyclooxygenase, you have the prostaglandin. Lipooxygenase, you have the leukotriene. Prostaglandin G2, prostaglandin H2, depending on the tissue, you have thromboxane E2, prostaglandin I2, also known as prostacyclin. Thromboxane E2 is procoagulation. Prostacyclin is anticoagulation. Aspirin inhibits the procoagulation. That's why aspirin is antiplatelet. That's why if you take lots of aspirin, aspirin you'll bleed. Is aspirin antiplatelet because it inhibits cyclooxygenase 1 or cyclooxygenase 2? And the answer is because it inhibits cyclooxygenase 1. I know that aspirin inhibits both, but its antiplatelet properties are due to cyclooxygenase 1 inhibition because cyclooxygenase 1 normally protects the stomach endothelium and normally is procoagulation via thromboxin A2. When aspirin destroys thromboxin A2, it's antiplatelet. Dose is baby. At low dose, aspirin is antiplatelet. That's why we call it baby aspirin. We used to call it baby aspirin because we used to give it to babies. But then we discovered something called RISE syndrome. It happens to kids after taking aspirin, especially when they have infection. Then we stopped giving baby aspirin to babies and we gave baby aspirin to the elderly because it's baby, it's low dose, 
therefore it's anti-platelet, it's cardioprotective. In the UK, it's 75 milligrams, and in the United States, baby, it's 81 milligrams. At high doses or moderate to high doses, aspirin is analgesic, antipyretic, and anti-inflammatory. In the UK, it's 300 milligrams, and in the United States, it's around 25 milligrams, baby. You can get my Perfect Snails Ultimate Notebook plus 20 lymphoma cases plus 25 bleeding cases at patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Before you give aspirin, make sure that the patient is not allergic because aspirin is immunogenic and the patient has no increased risk of bleeding because aspirin will lead to bleeding because it's antiplatelet. Hello. How do we eliminate aspirin from our bodies? It's called zero order elimination, baby, especially at high doses of aspirin. What the flip is zero order elimination? In uh, pharmacology, there is a difference between first order elimination and zero order elimination. Today, I'll talk about the zero order elimination. A constant amount is being eliminated per unit time. What the flip does that mean? means the rate of elimination is independent of plasma concentration or drug amount in your body. Okay, what well, the flip does do both of these mean? It means that every four hours, for example, we get rid of 10 milligrams. So we start with 80 milligrams of aspirin, then we have 70. After four hours, 60. After four more hours, 50. A constant amount, in this case, 10 milligrams, is being eliminated per unit time. Here, it's four hours. The rate of elimination is independent of plasma concentration. When we had lots of aspirin in our plasma, we got rid of 10 milligrams per four hours. When we have less aspirin in our plasma, we get rid of aspirin, again, 10 milligrams during four hours, the same rate of elimination. That's why we call it zero order elimination. So the rate of elimination is independent of the plasma concentration of aspirin. There is no fixed half-life. The T half is variable and I can mathematically prove it to you, okay? So, here is 80 milligram. Half-life is the time you need for this amount to equal half. So 80 to become 40. Four hours and four hours and four hours and four hours. Four times four, according to my calculator, is 16. Then 40, in order for 40 to become half, 20, we needed only eight hours. The T half, the half-life is variable. It was 16, then 8, then whatever. It's variable. It's not fixed because it's a zero-order elimination. And if you plot the amount and the time on the graph, it's going to be a straight line, baby. Why? Because a constant amount is being eliminated per unit time. It cannot be easier than that, guys. Come on. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I have more than 90 cases on Facebook. And go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis to get all of my notes. I have 400 plus illustrated notes that I draw for my videos. And I have the pun about lymphoma as well as many cases at patreon patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Thank you guys for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Channels, where medicine makes perfect sense. In the next video, we'll talk about the uses of aspirin as well as the side effects, so please subscribe.